What's up, everybody? It's the Temangali here, and um, I'm coming to you from my vehicle. Obviously, this is not a green screen. This is do not try this at home. I am a trained professional. Look, um, I want to leave a message with you today. It's powerful, and it's been popping up on my radar lately because I keep hearing so many people mention and talk about this. So this is what the message is. Back in 2006, I met an individual who was a huge mentor to me, very instrumental in helping me change my life and, and change my mindset. Now, I believe I've always had a pretty, pretty good mindset and a positive attitude. But this individual, much like Robert Kiyosaki or Napoleon Hill, huge difference in my life. And he taught me this principle. And he said, Satema, you can choose to be one of two people. You can choose to be a contributor or you can choose to be a taker. And he said, if you're a contributor, that means you are an agent to act. If you are a taker, it means you're like a victim who is to be acted upon and then to complain. So it's this very idea of uh, being a victim that I want to talk about. You know, this economy, I gotta tell you, it's got a lot of people hurting, myself included. I have felt the ravaging effects and the stranglehold. I feel like I'm an MMA fighter, like in the cage with the economy, and sometimes it's got me in this, you know, triple chokehold, or I'm not sure of the names of it. But you know what I mean, right? You know, come on, if you've read my blog, you've seen that I've lost all my cars, I lost six of my homes, I was selling. I sold everything. I mean, I sold my Triton keyboard. It's like the Lamborghini of keyboards, right? My Takamin guitar. Oh, my sweet guitar. I sold my bed, my other bed. I mean, I was selling everything just to pay the bills. And through all the things that are going on, I can see at times I've played the victim role, and at times I've played the, the true agent, the producer, a creator, someone who is in charge no matter what. A great book, highly recommend it. It's uh, by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. Powerful book because he was a survivor from the Holocaust and he never ever let them get to him. He said, you know, they could take everything away from me, but they couldn't take away my freedom and my ability to choose. So I want to leave you a powerful message, something that I've learned over the few years, and uh, this is how to tell if you're a victim. If you're playing the victim role, and you might be even blind to it. And here's how powerful the message is. So, clue number one, right? Success leaves clues, so do victims. Clue number one is that victims play the blame game. I mean, they blame, right? Blame everyone. They blame. It's it's the alarm clock that didn't go off. It's I'm a Polynesian. It's the color of my skin. It's the neighborhood that I grew up in. It's oh my gosh. It's you know. It's my upline's fault. It's my downline's fault. It's the person at the gym's fault. Well, it's of course everyone wants to blame their mom or dad. It's my parents' fault. I love you, mom and dad. Never blame you. My parents' fault. It's my brother's fault. It's because my parents got a divorce's fault. It's because the cop pulled me over and was a jerk's fault. I mean, come on. The blame game. And you can blame, and it's easy to play this game. Clue number two is that these victims, they rationalize and they justify. I mean, you know, they say things like, well, I really didn't want the promotion after they didn't get it, right? They, they, or, I don't, I, don't, I don't care about winning. An athlete, I don't care about winning. Are you kidding me? Or, well, money's not that important. Are you kidding me? Look, if you said your wife's not that important to you, would she stick around? So they rationalize and justify. And are you blaming other people today? Are you blaming the economy? Are you pointing the finger of blame for why your life is not better? Why you don't, you know, are not as healthy? Don't have, haven't signed up as many distributors? Uh, didn't get the promotion? Haven't lost those pounds? haven't started that sales page, haven't written the book, haven't gone after your dreams, I mean, whatever it is. Number one, blame. Number two, rationalize and justify. And number three, victims complain. I mean, they complain like it's going out of business. And the problem with complaining is, I want you to think about this. When you complain, where is your focus at? Like, where are you focusing on when you complain? When you complain and complain and complain and complain, 
you know that you're focusing only on the negative things of life. And how how positive is that? How good is that for you? It's not. So if you find yourself blaming other people and blaming the, the current circumstances and blaming anything else or justifying and rationalizing why your life should suck or why you should be miserable or why you should be overweight. Like for example, right? I'm at the gym with my buddy and uh, I'm talking to this father. He's probably 40 and he's got a son who's training. And he says, you know, he's like, man, you look like you can still play. And I'm like, thank you. And I'm saying, you know, what's going on with you? And he said, you know, I had an ACL injury a while ago. And, you know, it's just so hard. It's just so hard. And I'm thinking, you had an ACL injury. Like, who hasn't had an ACL injury that's ever played sports? And yet he uses that as a crutch, as an excuse of why he uh, should be overweight and fat. I talked to another guy at the gym who's like, yeah, I hurt my knee and I can't run. That's why I'm so heavy. Like, there's no such thing as swimming. Like, there's no such thing as eating healthy. There's no, I mean, come on, dude. Quit making excuses and blaming your knee and blaming why this happened. Dude, stop it. So that's how you can tell where you're at. Now, how do you overcome these things? Very, very powerful. 